Welcome to the Sizer online tutorial for the US edition. In this tutorial, we will go through some of the features available when adding loads. Entering loads in Sizer is easy to do. There is virtually no load type and distribution that cannot be modeled in Sizer. Let's look at some powerful options that you may not notice right away. We'll start off with the beam supports area loads from continuous joists option. For a floor or roof with joists supported by beams, normally, the amount of loads that go to the middle beam is assumed to be based on the tributary length of joists, assuming the joists on each side of the beam are simply supported. This would mean that if each joist was 12 feet long, the tributary length would be 6 feet from each joist, and the load on the beam would be based on a total of 12 feet. But if joists are continuous over the middle beam, there is actually a difference in the amount of load the beam receives, depending on the ratio of joist length from each side of the middle beam. Sizer setting allows you to specify that joists are continuous over the middle beam and calculates the load on the beam based on engineering mechanics. In other words, when this feature is checked and an area load A and a tributary width based on the concept of tributary length spacing for joist S are entered, the line load used in Sizer is W equals to the percentage times A times S, where the percentage is the ratio between the actual tributary width of the beam based on the engineering analysis to that based on the tributary length concept. When it is not checked, the line load is area load times the tributary width. Whether this option is enabled or not, it will ultimately have an effect on the shear, moment, and deflection values applied to the beam. The feature has two options, either two span or other. The default condition is that the beam supports a continuous joist having two equal spans, for which the percentage of load on the center beam you are designing is 1.25 higher than that based on the simple tributary area concept. If the joist has two unequal spans, the software allows you to enter a ratio of the two spans the beam is supporting. By default, the two spans are considered as equal. Although, if one of the two spans of the beam you are designing is 10 feet long and the other is 5 feet, you could enter 2 as the ratio, which will change the percentage of the load the beam will see from 125% to 137.5%. This percentage is based on engineering mechanics, and I will show you a familiar looking diagram to reiterate what I am talking about in a few seconds. When other is selected, Sizer gives you the option to input other percentage values, which is useful if your beam is supporting a floor system that consists of continuous joists with more than two spans. The input percentage in this case should be based on engineering analysis. Here is what I meant by the familiar looking diagram. This one is from the American Wood Council Beam Design Formulas with Shear and Moment Diagrams, Design Aid Number 6. Notice the reaction R2 for the beam supporting a 2 equal span joist is 10 divided by 8 WL or 1.25 WL, which is 125% higher than WL based on the tributary length concept. When the checkbox Add Concentrated Live Load is checked, the program automatically adds a concentrated live load to the beam. This is required by ASC 7 Clause 4.4. You can modify the magnitude and the width over which it is applied afterwards. Note that if this is the first load you place on the member, you will not be able to add other loads. Load the member with other loads first, and then check the Add Concentrated Live Load option. This section is only accessible when designing beams, floor joists, floor panels, and roof panels. As per ASC 7 Clause 4.4, which states the following, the default magnitude of the concentrated live load applied to the system is 2000 pounds with a width of 30 inch by 30 inch since the most common concentrated live load applicable to wood structures is for office floors. When this option is applied to a beam, the program verifies all of the load combinations it ordinarily does plus those with the concentrated live load. Sizer determines the worst case for shear bending, and deflection from all load combinations when performing the analysis. The virtual combinations are only shown if they are critical for the design. 
Now let's talk about the option to enter a point load as UDL. This setting allows you to specify point loads applied to joists and panels by entering a line load dimensions on the assumption that the load comes from a uniformly loaded wall. It is only available when designing floor joists, floor panels, roof joists or roof panels. The purpose of this feature is to allow you to easily adjust the floor joist spacing without recalculating the point load applied to the joist. For example, if I have a joist system where the joists are spaced at 12 inch off center and I want to check a 500 pound point load applied to each joist, perhaps due to a wall line load above, the point UDL is also 500 PLF. But then, if I want to see what happens if I increase the joist spacing to 24 inch off center, I would also want the point load to be adjusted to 1000 pounds because the joist spacing is doubled. Selecting this load entry option makes the change automatically. This setting is applied on a load by load basis, so it is possible to enter some point loads as UDLs and some as point loads. The word point UDL appears in the load list for these loads. The load input in column mode is similar to beam mode, with a few exceptions. Lateral loads can be applied to either the width or the depth of the column or studs. You can add actual loads. If you add a negative actual load, Sizer will treat the load as tension. And finally, the axial loads can be applied eccentrically. By default, each axial load will be automatically placed with an eccentricity of 1 6th depth of the member. You can turn this off so that the column is concentrically loaded.